Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Shelby Bowen. I'm a Christian life coach and today we are going over the five, at least five, maybe more, things that you should never say to somebody who has gone through spiritual abuse, who is healing from a toxic religious environment. We're going to talk about why these things are harmful, things that you can say instead of saying these things, and how the body of Christ should respond to spiritual abuse. Before we get into it, I'm a Christian life coach, like I just said, and I work with women who are healing from spiritually abusive environments, who are wanting to break off the triggers, break off the shame that they're feeling, and process and walk through healing from spiritual abuse. So if you're interested in learning more about that, I'll link my information on the screen, and you can see a link to my services in the description below. Let's go ahead and jump right into number one. Oh my gosh, you guys. This one is so frustrating, and it is when people say, no church is perfect, or the church is filled with imperfect people. And I know y'all have heard this one, maybe you've even said it, and the thing is, everything that you're going to hear me say today are all phrases that we have said over and over again like they are scriptures that we have to rehearse and recite like our life depends on it <laughs> and the truth is right like that is true there is it is true that the church is filled with imperfect people right i think we can all understand and acknowledge that i'm not perfect you're not perfect none of us are perfect and if you didn't know that newsflash but that's not the point right not being perfect does not excuse spiritual abuse. And look, there is a difference between church hurt, which I like to just determine as maybe you didn't get picked for the worship team or you felt left out in a small group that you were a part of. Whether it's right or wrong what you went through, it was more of a hurt feeling. What we're talking about here is spiritual abuse. When someone uses their power and their authority to manipulate and coerce you using the Bible, using spiritual practice into doing their human will. With that being said, no church is perfect is never an excuse for spiritual abuse. And you'll hear this often from people in that church setting. So maybe you were a part of a church and you came forward to your friends and you're like, hey, I went through this spiritual abuse here. This is what happened. They're like, well, no church is perfect. You know, we've already got our kids plugged in here. We have all of our friends here. We might as well just stay because no, you know what? Nobody's perfect. Do you want to know what that tells me? That... Your comfortability is more important than speaking out against truth. And I get it because there's been points in my life where I would probably would have found myself on that side of saying that quote. But it wasn't until I walked through my own experiences that I now can see these things for what they are. And look, I get it. It's not easy, nor should it just be expected that you just drop everything like that you know in a hat and just leave and take up charge and I get it. it it takes time for everybody to kind of remove the blinders of manipulation and coercion that's gone on in an environment and that looks different for different people it looks different in the length of time how they process how they heal how they move forward but when you become aware of spiritual abuse and you choose to stay silent you've become complicit and that's so much of what I'm seeing in the church today and that might be what you're experiencing from your friends and your family just feeling this like sense of disloyalty almost where you're like I went through this really traumatic experience but none of you it feels like are sticking by me because you're still going to this church and at that point, you know, I've had to realize from my own life, there are, it's, it's different for different relationships. So all of that to say, we recognize that none of us are perfect and we are not setting these high standards on pastors and churches to be perfect. We are just looking for truth, for authenticity, for the simplicity of the gospel to be in these places and sticking up for that does not mean that you are causing division that you are wrong that you are a troublemaker fighting for truth being a peacemaker means that we have to kind of sometimes 
not I don't even like the term stir the pot it's just speaking out about truth and sometimes it's a really hard pill for people to swallow but using the excuse that the church is filled with imperfect people does not excuse spiritual abuse and we really need to stop conforming because it's comfortable we need to recognize the problems and the issues that are going on in the institution of the church. We're all the body of Christ. I love God's people so much. But the institution that man has created, this business-like church model, I mean, we need to look into it. Because when a pastor is so famous that he can't be held accountable anymore because he is the brand of the church image, and if they brought him down and he had to face up to things he he did and the whole ministry would crumble. I mean, that's not healthy. That's not a way that we need to be setting up churches to function. So let's just move forward into the next one. So number two is, it wasn't all bad, was it? It's like saying to somebody who was in a very toxic relationship that they finally got out of, they had the bravery and the courage to remove that self from that relationship, and you say to them, well, it wasn't all bad, was it? I mean, <laughs> that is so harmful. Please never say that. And I'm, if somebody has said that to you, I am so sorry that is not okay not in no way shape or form are good actions ever outweighing the bad ones that have happened and i want to say this when you're in a spiritually abusive environment and there is that power structure and you are underneath somebody who is very manipulative and coercive then you probably for a really really long time wondered if you were the problem and if you just needed to let go of these things that you were seeing and maybe you were just being too critical and so when you finally get the bravery and courage to come out of that environment and then someone says oh well, it wasn't all bad was it it pushes you back into that mindset that you had in that environment you start to think oh my gosh I guess it wasn't that bad maybe have I made this worse than it really was I'm I exaggerating what happened to me and then we start gaslighting ourselves and so no okay take it for what it is on paper sometimes I, I do this with my clients I'm like let's write out everything that happened in this environment and then we look at it on paper like we are scientists analyzing the data let's let's remove ourselves from the experience and just look at it in any shape or form, is this okay? Are any of these events that happened to you acceptable or something that, you know, like if someone said something mean to your face and, you know, we can, we can heal, we're all adults, we can move past those things. But if this was repeated abusive behavior, no, that's never okay to stay under. That's not okay. That's not something that you should diminish either. It took me a lot of time after walking out of the ministry I worked for to realize that what I went through was really wrong and it was really hurtful. And it took me acknowledging how wrong it was to be able to heal from it. And that's something else that I would encourage for you that you have to acknowledge how horrific somebody's actions were for you to be able to properly heal from the things that happened to you in that environment. And so I just don't surround yourself with people who say these things because it will only inhibit you in your healing process. Because at the end of the day, we want to be healed people. We don't want to be bitter, right? We, we can feel all of those emotions of anger and um, pain and all of that stuff, but we don't want to live there. We, we acknowledge it's there and we move through the stages of grief and we feel all the things so that we don't have to live in that place and we can forgive and move forward. Forgiving is really something that we do to release us from that place. You hold on to bitterness and resentment, that's only going to inhibit you in life. And so I forgive not because... I excuse somebody else's behavior, but because I am releasing myself from the torment of holding on to what that person did. I'll say before I continue that by no means, and this is going into the next one, which is, are you working towards reconciliation? That's number three. And the answer is, you can say no. <laughs> and by reconciliation, I'm talking about 
going back to that environment by no way shape or form should you ever feel the need to go back to that environment where that took place we can bless people in the sense that god i really hope you reveal to them their evil and wicked ways and we can forgive the things that they have done to us but what that looks like is on your own timeline no one should ever tell you have you forgiven them yet or have you reconciled yet when someone has utterly destroyed your life in so many ways stolen years from you stolen years from your family when they've manipulated and coerced you you are not on a timetable to forgive in the pattern of what it looks like i do believe as christians we are called to forgive but again i think it goes back to the point of i'm not going to tie myself to the things you did i will never accept what you did as okay i will never put myself around you but I'm going to let you go and I'm letting you out of my life and I'm forgiving your actions because we all need that. With that being said, I know that's a hard and sensitive topic for people. One exercise that I always do with my clients is the empty chair, pretending like that person's sitting in front of you and just saying all the things that you wish to say to them. Maybe that's writing a letter. Sometimes it's just a way to help us express how we feel and let go um by no way shape or form am i telling you you need to forgive right now or just let it all go and heal and move forward let yourself walk through the stages of grief and how that looks like for you in your life just don't stay there just don't stay in the place of bitterness because all that will do is keep, like continue to give them the power over your life when you decide to take back that power for yourself it is releasing them and letting them go and that is taking the tr control and the power back into your own life so that you can move forward. The last thing I want to say in point number three is that when you ask somebody if they have reconciled, you're putting an undue pressure on the victim of these experiences to seek out a healing in the relationship. And there's some people you just really don't ever need to talk to again. You can heal from the things they did. You can release them and move forward without having to have a conversation with them again. We don't need to be putting that pressure on people. The next one, which is number four, is I don't want to gossip. Oh, this is another frustrating one. And you'll hear this in the same as point number one, which was no church is perfect. But when people say, oh, I just don't want to gossip again, they're choosing comfortability because it's easier for them to turn a blind eye, for them to turn a blind ear than to recognize the things that are happening around them. And so by just saying, oh, I don't want to gossip with you for you trying to express to somebody the things that happened to you. That's not gossip. You seeking help and you sharing truth of the things that happened to you is not gossip. Gossip is sp spreading false information about other people. If you were saying, hey, I was a part of this church and I was hurt really badly in these areas, that is not gossip okay? You are sharing the truth of what has happened, and sometimes people need to know that. They need to be warned not to enter into a spiritually abusive environment. By you sharing your story, you could be helping somebody else. Now, it can turn into gossip when you talking about your neighbor, exposing information, maybe you don't know whether it's true or not, or information that's none of your business, and there definitely are malicious people, right? And I think even in the spiritual abuse or deconstructing deconstructing and reconstructing faith world on social media i've noticed there are a lot of people who post content from a bit of a malicious place and so i always say when it comes to this topic what is the motive of your heart and so for me before i post something before i share something I ask myself, what is the motive of my heart on why I'm sharing this? Am I sharing this because I want to help somebody? Am I sharing it because I'm trying to be vindictive? And sometimes I've had to delete things. <laughs> and then sometimes I realize like, no, you know, this is truth and people need to hear this. I don't personally share names, places, or ministries that I've been a part of. Not that I think that is wrong to do at all. Again, I think that you have people exposing a lot going on right now in the mega church or just regular church world and i think that's super needed for me i just don't think that is healthy with what i'm trying to do in my life right now i don't think that's what 
I need to be doing. So again, it's going to look different for everybody. If you feel called to go out there and name the names of the places and the motive of your heart is pure to help the people in those environments, then great, go ahead, go do it. But it just all goes back to why are you sharing what you're sharing? Why are you doing what you're doing? And if your heart is pure before God in those things, then that's between you and him. So moving on to the last one, which is point number five, and it is when people say, what about the image of the pastor? What about the image of the church? When you are talking about sharing your story of spiritual abuse or other abuse that's taking place within a church or ministry setting. And if you have ever said those words to somebody before, I'm going to tell you right now, your priorities are so out of whack that should never, ever, ever be uttered out of somebody's mouth to somebody who has been through spiritual abuse. It is not okay to say. It is so hurtful. The In the church, we have a abuser-centric healing model. When in reality, we should have a victim-centric healing model. We should not be worried about the image of a church or a ministry over the healing and restoration of the lives that have been crushed under the weight of abusive leaders. So if you've ever said that to somebody, ask for their forgiveness. Please never say that again. If somebody has said that to you before, I am sorry. That is so hurtful. I had somebody say that to me. And it is like a second wave of trauma that can happen to you when someone says those things to you. Because then, again, we are putting the pressure and weight of the image of a pastor or church on a victim who has been through something horrific, when in reality, they just need to be focused on healing their lives and moving forward. One of the most effective ways to silence a victim is to fill them with a false sense of guilt that if the pastor and his family are ruined because of you sharing your story or the church is ruined or if there's division in the church it's going to be all your fault that is a total false sense of guilt that places so much shame on the person and that is a yoke that god has not asked you to carry God does not need us to hide and cover up wickedness to protect his image, nor does God need us to hide and protect the image of a church in order to protect the image of Christians to the world. If he did, what in the heck kind of Christianity would we be in? Where we would serve and follow a God who would cover up wickedness for the image of the body of Christ. I mean, I wouldn't want anything to do with that. And realistically, I don't think anybody would. I want people to see the body of of Christ as people who aren't perfect, but who seek to live humble and transparent lives. And when we do fall and when we do stumble, that we can repent, ask people for forgiveness, and heal from our wicked ways. Because that's what this whole thing is. And it'll lead me into the last little thing i got to say here in this video, which is none of this do I want it to drive you away from the body of Christ. Whatever church looks like for you, if it's gathering together with friends, whether it's going to a church building, keep doing what works for you. I don't want any of these things to drive you away. What I want is for this conversation to refine the body of Christ, that we would, instead of looking out to the world and judging and condemning everything they do, that we would take a minute and look within ourselves and be like, wow, we have some work to do in here. We have some healing to do in here. We have some repentance to do in here. So let's have these conversations. Don't be afraid to speak out on these topics and let the motive of our heart be unity in the body of Christ. Because saying these things to people who've only been through suffering and trauma is only going to push them further from the faith. I cannot tell you how many people reach out to me because of the work I do and tell me that they were pushed away from Jesus because of how horribly they were treated because of abuse they went through in the church, that nobody believed them, that they were ostracized from their community, that they were slandered, 
and that people said these wicked phrases to them and it pushed them away from their faith altogether. And I can understand that kind of pain and suffering and how it would lead to that place. But I'll tell you today, that is not the heart of God. God would never, ever, ever say those things. It is not his heart for you. If you are still clinging to your faith and unsure what to do because you've seen these things, you've heard these things, you're going to church on Sunday and you're looking around and you're seeing what, how have we gotten to this place? How has it become so much about money and show business and social media and cameras what are we doing and if you are barely clinging to your faith because of everything that you're seeing in the church right now i just want to tell you it is not the heart of god so many people cling to the church as if their faith is in the church but your faith is not in the institution that man has created your faith is in jesus christ and he would never do these things. And I will tell you, when I walked through these things, it shook my faith down to my core and I had to rebuild it up to what it is today, which is better than it's ever been. And sometimes our eyes have to be open to all of these things for us to go back to the simplicity of the gospel, us to seek God for ourselves, us to read the Bible for ourselves, and us to pursue a walk with Jesus for ourselves. Because if we did that in the confines of only the church building and rested our faith on whether or not the church institution was a moral place, then we would all crumble and there would be no one left behind. And so seek God for yourself, find him for yourself, and just pray for the church, pray for the institution of church. The body of Christ is beautiful, okay? We are the church. What we're talking about is the institution of church, the system of the church. And I believe God's gonna do a beautiful thing. I believe these things are coming out, that these conversations are gonna be had and are being had because he's doing a healing work in the body of Christ. If this video, has helped you or if you have just enjoyed listening to this um i ask that you would subscribe to this channel like this video comment down below your thoughts it just helps to get this video out there in the algorithm to other people who need to hear this message and it helps me continue to do the work that i'm doing today thank you guys for listening if you've made it this far um i'll see you in the next video i'm always looking for tips for new video uh content ideas so also comment that below i'll see you next time